Hello everyone, this is the IFC Architect. Um, Happy New Year and compliments of the season. Welcome to the first video of 2023. Uh, today we're going to be doing custom line weights, line styles and pa uh, hatch patterns um, using CSS. It's not too complicated, but it is tedious. To install Blender BIM or Blender, check the installation videos in the description. Please update your Blender BIM to the latest build I'm using found on my channel about page. My layout very simply has the properties on the right hand side and the outliner on the left hand side. Please make sure that you've got your snaps enabled, which just allow you to easily uh, model things and move them around and make sure that your move gizmo, this little object here, is uh, selected. Control Z, Control Z. You can follow what I'm doing, the screencast keys in the bottom left. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So we're just going to go through it and I'm just going to get into it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of this and clean it up a bit. So I'm going to select everything here and I'm actually going to get rid of the outliner because we don't need it today. Um, I'm just going to make this a tiny bit bigger and I'm just going to say load project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this detail file for line weights. This you can download in the description. Um, for those who are familiar, this is the same project file from the step-by-step -step project. Um, but you don't have to have done that. So I'm just going to press N. We're going to open up this sidebar. We're going to say BIM documentation and we're going to activate the plan. And then we're just going to say, we're going to turn on the viewport annotations, which you can see now. And we're just going to say, create drawing. And there you can see the drawing created with all the default hatch patterns and line weights. Um, we're going to head back to Blender and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a custom uh, CSS file. So what you need to do is you need to copy this CSS file from where it is located in your Blender BIM installation. So I'm just going to make a little notepad over here and I'm just going to copy the file path here. So if you're on Windows, this is where it will be found. If you're on Mac or Linux, you just figure it out compared to this. So starting with the hard drive, C, your users, your user, your username goes here, app data, roaming, Blender Foundation, Blender, the version of Blender that you are using currently, um, scripts, add-ons, Blender BIM, BIM data, and then styles. So that's where you want to go. So this is where it, mine is, basically. Um, and you can see it's in styles, and you can see there is a default, and there is a sample file. So the sample file I imagine is for editing, but in my case, I really like to copy the default file because it really has a lot of things preloaded. So we're just going to copy the, pre the default file. You're just going to say copy. And then you're going to find the location that you downloaded the IFC file. They have to be in the same place. And you're just going to paste the file here. Now with this default CSS file, what you want to do is you just want to relabel it. So it says we're going to relabel it to tut for tutorial. And then we're going to go back to Blender. We're going to select the camera. We're going to go to object properties. I'm going to collapse everything. IFC object metadata. And we're going to go to IFC object property sets. So inside of this, we have an EP set for drawing. We're just going to edit that. And here at the bottom, where it says style sheet, we're just going to write tut.css. So this lets this camera reference that CSS file. And then we're just going to say confirm. And we're going to now go into the actual uh, tut file. So we're going to go back to our IFC file. We're going to click on the tut. And we're just going to right click and say open with. I'm just going to use notepad because it's the simplest. And you can see here, it just starts with a little description and a warranty and a warning from Dion, the main developer of Blender BIM. Um, so it's not a final product, just be careful, etc., etc. But that's not what we're interested in for today. We're going to come down here to the actual uh, types. So here you can see there is a little description for text and cut, projection and annotation. And then these are predefined types. These are basically purely 2D elements. And then material. This is like a 3D element that references a 2D pattern. So for our first example, we're just going to change the color of the text to, let's say, blue. And we're going to change the, the fill and stroke color, the cut, to red. 
So then we're just going to say file save and we go back to Blender and then we say create drawing and you can see here that all the text that is default has changed to blue and the line, the cut lines on the edge of the, the walls are red. So because these are 2D elements, the window and the, the sanitary waste stuff, that doesn't change color. And then because these are annotation, they haven't changed color either. So <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the line weights and the styles. We want to change the um, this color of this ramp uh, arrow from uh, just a solid black to a dashed green, I'm going to say. <laughs> so we're going to go back to our Tuts CSS. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this boundary line. It's a predefined type. You can see it has a dash already in it. And we're just going to paste it at the bottom here. And then we're going to change the name for this thing to green. And we want the stroke to be green, lowercase. And we want the stroke width to be two. And then I think we'll just make the dash array half the size. So six to 1.5. Uh, to 1.5 again and 2 again so then we're just going to say file save and then we're going to go to blender and then I'm just going to hide these elements so it's easier to select this line I'm going to select it you can see it's selected because it says line work here I'm going to close object property sets and we're going to go to attributes I'm going to say edit and here where it says object type you want this to just be whatever you label the predefined type. So we will label it green and say save attributes. And then we're just going to say create drawing. And you can see we have a nice super thick dashed green line. Um, it's not beautiful, but <laughs> this is just for example. So the next thing we're gonna do is edit a hatch pattern. So we wanna change this red brick hatch pattern to a finer uh, pattern. And we want it to actually be red instead of black. So what we need to do is to go to the template folder, it's near the style folder. So I'm going to go here in styles. We just go back to data and over here is templates. So you can see this has title blocks, markers, patterns, symbols, and view title. We're going to go through all of these, um, except for title blocks. It'll be for a different video. So we're going to start with patterns, which are hatch patterns. I'm going to right click and I'm just going to say open with notepad. Then I'm going to make this full size. And you can see each pattern here starts with a label. It's got a width, it's got a height. This is a rotation. And then this is the actual spacing of the pattern. So something like steel, which is just a few lines is quite simple, but something like, uh, let's say sand, which is a bunch of dots <laughs> gets a bit complicated, but yeah. So what we want to do is, um, and you can just copy it. It's going to be in the description below is we're going to paste in our own red brick pattern. So you can see here, each pattern is just broken by this little pattern and pattern over here. So I'm just going to copy paste something like this. Copy it. And then press enter just before the SVG. And I'm just going to say paste. And you can see here, I've just labeled it red brick. Its width is two and its height is two. So this is just one less than the, the default brick pattern. And I've just relabeled the stroke red. So then we're just gonna say file save. And that changes every Blender file for this version of Blender BIM. Um, but what you need to do is two more steps. We need to create the material in the CSS file. So we have to go back to Tuts. And we're just gonna copy, this is going to be a material now. So we're just gonna copy the brick one, copy go to the end, press V, and then we're just going to relabel this as red brick and red brick. And then we can just say save. And now we need to go into Blender and we need to select the wall and we need to go to object properties, IFC object metadata, IFC object material. And here where it says brick, which we've labeled previously, we're just going to call it red brick. And then uh, because all of these walls share the same material, these big walls, they're going to be the same. So I'm just going to say create drawing. And you can see the hatch pattern has become finer and now it's red. And you can see these smaller walls because they have a different material. 
um, are still the old uh, brick hatch pattern. So we're going to change those as well. Go back to Blender, select the smaller wall, <laughs> not the bathroom. And then we're going to go back to where we were, enable editing, and just label this red brick as well. And then when we say create drawing, you can see that's changed. So that's creating a custom hatch pattern, and you can do this with anything. You can rotate the earth pattern, you can do anything. It's a lot easier than editing patterns in Revit, for instance, without like extra add-ons and stuff. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to do is edit some markers. So we're going to edit the size of the tick over here. I'm just going to make it roughly half the size. Um, so we're going to go back to our templates file. And here where it says markers, we're going to right click. We're going to say open with notepad. And then I'm just going to make this full size. And then we just want to scroll down until we see dimension marker start and dimension marker end. So I'm just going to paste this in, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking all these values, the 30, the 20, the 10, 15, all of it, and I'm just making it half the value. Um, so it's half the size. So I'm just going to copy it in, and again, you can just copy this from the description as well. So I'm just going to copy from here until where it says marker, basically. And there you can see it is 15, 10.5, 5, 7.5, all the values are half. So then we just say file save. And then for this, we don't have to edit anything else. We come back to Blender and we can just say create drawing. And then you can see that these tick marks are half the size. So there's the previous one and here's the new one. Just makes it a bit more legible if you ask me. All right, next thing we're gonna do is edit a section symbol, these arrowheads, which I don't really like because they're like Revit arrowheads. I know this is standard in a lot of countries, but I just prefer normal arrow, <laughs> just a plain arrow. So what we need to do is go back to our templates and then here where it says symbols, we're going to right click, we're going to say open with notepad, make this full size. And these are the two things we want to edit, the section arrow and the section tag. So essentially I want to get rid of the section tag. So I'm going to make all of these values zero and then the section arrow, I'm just going to make a tighter arrow. So I'm just going to copy these through. So here we're just going to paste our section arrow and we're just going to paste our circle tag. And then we're just going to say file, save. And we're going to go back to Blender. And we're just going to say create drawing. And there you can see it's just made it, you know, a lot clearer in my mind. Um, I still don't know how to move these guys away or delete them. <laughs> but at the moment, I just delete them afterwards in Inkscape. Anyway. So there's kind of like a general synopsis for this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, the last thing we're going to do is edit the, um, the view title marker. So if we go back to Blender and we create a sheet, and I'm just going to make an A3 sheet. And then we add our drawing to that sheet. And then we say create sheets. And you can see this has been added as a sheet. This little thing here is the view title marker. So what we're going to do is edit that. I'm just going to bring it out. And we're going to go back to our uh, templates. I'm going to say view title. And we're going to say open with notepad. And then here, you just want to ignore most of this until we get about here. So here, this is the size of the circle. So here's the radius, which is the main thing. And then the C and Y position. So the radius, I'm just going to change to 2.5, for instance. Um, and then we're going to come here, and you can see this. there's three sets of text. This is the number, this is the top text, and this is the bottom text. So the number, um, what we want to do, because I'm using open gosht, you can see there's two sets here. There's one for, for Arial over here, and there's one for open gosht. So these are two different uh, fonts. So I'm using OpenGosht, so I'm just going to make all of these dudes a bit smaller. So it says four, I'm going to make this three. And then if we scroll down here, OpenGosht, it says three, 3.5, I'm going to say 2.5. And then down here, again, OpenGosht, I'm going to say 3.5 to 2.5 as well. 
so we made the circle smaller 2.5 and then we made um the, the the number smaller we made the top text smaller and the bottom text smaller so i'm just going to say file save we're going to go back here and we're just going to say create sheets and then if we just swap between the two you can see that this has changed it's much smaller you can also make it bigger point is that you can edit it anyway um this is kind of the final version i've also made my own more extensive um custom line weights but i think it's good for people to just start with this because those are very south african standardy um and just play with this the file is in the description and all of these um, portions that you copy across are written out there and you just need to do it on your own anyway fantastic thanks for watching and i'll catch you at the next one uh, if you found that interesting or useful you can check out more at the os arc community page this was made using blender the blender bim add-on which is powered by the ifc open shell and the community that we're involved in is the os arc community i will provide links in the description and you can check other videos to follow along thanks for watching bye bye